So Philippians 1 <coughs> says, Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I love how he starts off the book of Philippians. Grace and peace. <laughs> Why? Because without grace... Grace is the gift of God. That's what we've been saved by. <laughs> I mean, we cannot go into this life without grace. You can have peace, but if you don't have grace, sooner or later your peace doesn't even matter to you because everything will be taken away. But when you have grace, you are secured in His purpose and in His will because His grace is the gift that has saved you. So grace and peace, very important. Peace is for your mind. Grace is for your whole being. Grace and peace from our God, Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in prayer of mine for you all, making request of joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident in this very thing, that he which began a good work in you will complete. complete. I like that. Mine says perform, King James. Perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So he that began a good work, so there is a work, your life is a, a work. He that began the work will perform it and complete it. How many times do we feel incomplete in our lives? At the end of the day, we felt, hey, I've missed it there. I've come short here. Just me. All right, I've come short today. In many instances, I have not made the mark that I wanted to. But at the end of the day, when I sit and look at myself, do I evaluate myself on my shortcomings? Or do I understand, like we've been sharing the last few weeks, that we grow up into him, a perfect man. So he is the perfect man. So me, with my incompletions, in him is complete. So he that started the work, he will perform and complete it. So grace and peace be unto you. Even as it is meet for me to think that because I have in my heart, in as much as both bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, you are all partakers of my grace. For God is my record, how greatly I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. And this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, that you may approve things that are excellent that they may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Wow. Being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Christ Jesus, unto the glory and praise of God. Woo. So, if the work is complete, we will be filled with the fruits of righteousness. Love, joy, peace, righteousness, long-suffering, meekness, kindness. Woo. Woo. All those wonderful things that we are all so good stewards of. Amen. That's where you say amen. 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 <laughs> all right. Being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and the praise of God. But I would, you would that you should understand, brethren, that the things that which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the place and in all other places, and many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, whoa, they have no more hair, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. So indeed preach Christ, even of envy and strife, and some of also of good will. The one preach Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the uh, defense of the gospel. What then, notwithstanding every way, whether it's pretense or in truth, Christ is preach. Ha. He is the one that started the work, and he is the one that will perform it and complete it. So it doesn't matter how we try to understand these things. When we speak Christ, ha, we will be complete. Okay, for I know all this uh, shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, according to my earnest expectation and my hope 
that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always, now I'm also Christ, shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor, yet what I shall choose I wot not. For I am in a twixt between, having a desire to part and to be with Christ, which is far better, Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. And having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you all for your furtherance and for joy of faith, that your rejoicing may be more abundant in Jesus Christ for me by my coming to you again. Only let your conversation be as it becomes to the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be present, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. And in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake, having the same conflict which you saw in me, and now you hear to be in me. Hmm. All right, let's go to Philippians 2. It therefore be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels of mercies, fulfill you my joy, that you be like-minded. Ah, okay. You be like-minded. My dear Lord, How is that going to be possible for me to be like-minded like my mother? That's why you have grace and mercy, man. Oh, Michelle. Okay. That you be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind, naturally. Yo. This is impossible. There's no way on earth that we can be like-minded. Even uh, look at the Tower of Babel. I mean, those guys were one mind, speaking one voice. And after a while, uh, yeah, everything happened. They got confused. We can be like-minded up until a certain point, up until we have one disagreement. And one disagreement has enough power to ruin a relationship of 30 years. Nah? You all have experienced that. Some of you aren't 30 years old yet. I'm talking to my kids, don't worry. So to be like-minded is not a natural thing. It is a spiritual thing. You cannot look at this in the natural mind. You cannot even try to understand what he writes when you say, with the same love being one accord and of one mind. There is no way... But we look at mind and we think of it as our mind, as our natural being, because that's how we think, that's how we reason. Um, I cannot be one mind with you. It is impossible. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in loneliness of mind, let each esteem other better than himself. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Ah, all right. So let this mind be in you. That was in Jesus. So are we going to go look for Jesus' brains and put him in our heads so that we can have the thoughts of Jesus? No, but he says, let this mind be in you, which was in Jesus Christ. Now we have to understand, if we look at Jesus... He was a man just like us, have the same trials, temptations just as us, same desires as us, but yet he was perfect and without sin. But just take it back when um, his parents went to the temple and on their way back, how many days were they traveling before they realized Jesus wasn't with them? I think three. I had four in my mind. All right, three days. Now imagine this, they are traveling back to their home, three days later they only realize our boy is not in the car. (laughs) Now 
yeah, I, I don't know. My, my parents have left me a couple of times in church because I fell asleep under the chairs. He became a preacher. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, I remember once my parents, I thought they went on holiday without me. <laughs> it's a terrible feeling. But uh, three days, man, come on. Somewhere along the, the first half of the first day, you have to realize your kid didn't come to you for food or anything. So when they finally found him, they found him in the temple speaking to the scribes, having conversation with them and the scribes listening to what he had to say. No? And then um, he says, don't you know I have to be busy with my father's work? So let this mind be in you that was in Jesus, understanding that the father has work. Look, he that started the work will perform it and he will complete it. All you need to do is be an open vessel for him to use you. To understand the work goes with the mind of Christ. So, so many times in our, our Christian life, we attempt to start doing the work ourselves, with our own minds, with our own reasoning, trying to be the best that we can be. And we always come short. We always fall short. But when we understand the work that he started requires his mind. Because he is the one <laughs> that knows how it works. I mean, we can talk about the work of God. We can talk about the Bible, but I have no way to explain to you what the work of God is. I have no way of explaining to you if the Spirit tells me today to do this, to phone that person, to give this person 100 rand, to stop there, to turn right there. How do you explain those things? You cannot explain them. You cannot write them down. You hear people talking about the Spirit, but it's unexplainable because it is a different mind. It is not your brain. It's not your thoughts. It is a different mind. Okay, we're going to get to that right now. John 17. So this is, we just spoke on the beginning of Jesus' life, where he says, don't you know I have to be busy with my father's work? A small boy. Yeah, where it's the end of his life, he starts speaking again. He says, these words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify your Son, that your Son also may glorify you, as you have given Him power over all flesh, that He should give eternal life to as many as you have given Him. And this is life eternal, that they might know you, that you are the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Now, I just stop there at verse 3. Do you see <laughs> that Jesus is talking in the third person here? He is Jesus, but he's talking about Jesus like, yeah. all right. So, this is life eternal. Uh, verse 4, I have glorified you on earth, and I have finished the work which you have given me. Ooh. <laughs> Praise the error. And now, O oh Father, glorify you with me and with your own self, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. I have manifested thy name unto the men which you have given out of the world, than they were, and you gave them gave to me, and they have kept your word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever you have given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which you have given me, and they have received them, and they have known surely that I have come from you, and they have believed that you have sent me. And I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which you have given me. <laughs> For they are mine, and all are mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. Yes, that's beautiful. Yeah. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father. Keep through your own name those whom you have given to me, that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those that you gave me I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now I come out to you, and all these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Oh, beautiful. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Now, just 
verbally said, I am not of the world. So you cannot understand the things of the Spirit with a natural mind. The world, when they look at this, they try to be like-minded through the natural, and it never succeeds. Look at what these three have shown us. I mean, you have Napoleon, you have the British Empire, you have the Roman Empire. So many empires rises up because they are like-minded. All of a sudden, they lose the like-mindedness and they unravel because they are natural. This world was not made for the natural man. <laughs> Newsflash. So why do you want to believe the natural world when they say everything is going to perish and everything is going to fade away when they are not in control of this world? But the spiritual people are still asleep, so they don't take control of what has been given to them because they are still trying to be like-minded in a natural way. They're still trying to complete the work with their own mind. But when we read through this John 17, Jesus says, I have finished the work that you have given me. He has finished his work. Jesus Christ. Let this mind, he, he's already finished. But now, we are not finished. But he says, I am praying for them. <laughs> I'm giving them my joy. So he is praying for you. He is giving you joy. So that the work that is at hand will be completed. Okay, verse 12. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. And thou have given me, I have kept them, and none of them is lost. All right, carry on. Verse 13. And now I come to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in them. I have given them your word, and the world hated them, because they are not of the world even as I am not of the world. I pray not that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep him from the evil. <laughs> they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through your truth. Your word is truth. Mm. As you have sent me into the world, even so I have also sent them into the world, and for your sakes, I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Yo, yeah, it's beautiful. Neither pray I these alone, but for all of them which shall believe on me through their... Oh, you get this. There is a work at hand that needs to be performed. And he says, I do not pray for you alone. And I'm speaking to you, for us, because we are saved. We have the word of God says, I do not pray for them alone, but for also those which shall believe on me through their word. So the word that you speak will become the word of God to others. Ah, you see, the work that is completed is through the word. It says, I've done it according to your word. He writes here in John 17, he says, I have completed the work that you have given me. What is that work? It is the word of God. That word is the truth. So if we start understanding that we cannot understand the word of God if we don't have the mind of Christ, because no one can understand the word of God, no one has seen God, except they've seen Jesus. Because he is in the Father, the Father is in him. No one can see the Father except through me. So that means no one can either hear God except through him. No one can step through into the kingdom except through him. So it's impossible for you to hear the word of God unless the mind of Christ is in you. Ah, that is like the connection, like synopsis, like the license key. <laughs> Almost like a software. You can open it, but you can't do anything because it asks for the serial number or the license key. And this one is unhackable. <laughs> you have to buy it. <laughs> it's going to cost you everything. No, it doesn't cost you anything. He gave you everything so that you can step into it. All right. That they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, and they also be one in us that the world may believe that you have sent me. And the glory which you have given me, I have given them, 
that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and you in me, and they may be made perfect in one, that the world may know that you have sent me, and that you have loved them as you have loved me. Father, I will that you also whom you have given be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which you have given me. For you loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that you have sent me, and I have declared unto them your name, and I will declare it, that the love wherewith you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. Oh, Jesus. The only way this world will know the true God is through your words through you, and it's so beautiful that the seed that was planted for the first fruits of many to come, that seed cannot die because it did fall into the ground and it did spring up. That's why it says we are branches engraved into him. So it means we do not depend to grow ourselves and we cannot depend on growing ourselves because we are merely engrafted, drawing from him understanding that the work that he started, he will perform it and he will complete it. All we need to do is be engrafted into him and he will perform the work. But don't let our minds start trying to do the work. Because, I don't know about you, but sometimes I I talk to people and they bring up the Bible and they start arguing about things and I'm like, man, But why are you trying to figure this out with your earthly mind? Why are you trying to put science into the Bible? The Bible is not natural. It is spiritual. So the work is not natural. It is spiritual. So the mind is not natural, but it is spiritual. You see, there are so many books on how to change your thoughts, change your mind, change all these things, and it's all natural ways of making you a better person. But it's only, it's a placebo. It is a smarty. It's just the sugar-coated nothing. Because you can do all that you want to, to change your mind, until that one instance where you disagree with someone, and you lose it all. So your five years of thinking nicely, speaking nicely, all of those things are just gone because it depends on you. As long as it depends on you, sooner or later there's going to come a short. (laughs) Because the work that we have, you did not start it. It was already started by Jesus. And the beautiful thing is, he says, the work that you have given me, I have completed it. (laughs) So I don't know if you understand it. So in fact, the work is already complete. All we need to do is just step into the completed work. Let this mind be in you. Let's go to Ephesians 4. Are you still there, John? Awesome. Awesome. Uh, Ephesians 4. Ah, hallelujah. I beseech you, a prisoner of the Lord, that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called, with all loneliness, meekness, and long-suffering, forbearing one another in love. Woo. Sounds like uh, he's talking about the fruits of righteousness. Yeah. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, one Spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Wow! Right, you guys are very excited tonight. (laughs) But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. To every one of us is given grace according to the measure of of the gift of Christ. We have been given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Christ completed the work. 
All right? So if we, if we put that into a measure, it is full. Yeah. So you have been given the full gift. Not you've been measured out a gift. You've been given the full, completed work of Christ through grace. <laughs> ah, this is beautiful. All right, then he carries on who ascended, all these things, and let's go down to... Uh, whew. Yeah, I don't think we should skip everything. Yeah, let's read Ephesians 4. Wherefore he says... When he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now he that ascended, what is it? But he that also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. He that descended is the same also that ascended far above all heavens that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Mm. Till we all come into the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So, verse 12, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. What is the work of the ministry if the work is already completed? It is the body of Christ. So, uh, till we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, makes increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Here. And this I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart who being past feeling have given themselves over to lavishness, to, anyway, to craziness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. <laughs> when I read this the other day, it kind of stood out that greediness is the, <laughs> the common denominator <laughs> in all craziness and uncleanliness. <laughs> but you have not so learned... Ah. If so be that you heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off, ah, what does Jesus say in John 17? He says, your word is truth. Now he comes and he says, the truth is in Jesus. So where do we find the truth? Ah, the truth is in me. No, <laughs> you are in him. He is in you, but that's for a different reason. You need to find truth in him. See, I see too many people saying that he is in me, so the truth is in me. No. The truth is not me, because I have so many shortcomings. I'm just bold enough to confess that I'm not perfect. But in him, I am perfect, because the truth is in him. I mean, this is what we just read. We are being built up in him. The edifying the body, the work is the body coming together. Like, he, he explains um, the body in this kind of way uh, when Jesus says, uh, the ear cannot say to the nose, I don't need you, or the toe to the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> so all of us are members of one body. So let's look at this body. The work for the finger is complete. The finger is complete, but without it being attached to the hand, uh, it has no purpose. Yeah. So he doesn't need to work to be a finger. He is a finger. Yes. The pastor doesn't need to work to be a pastor. He is a pastor. Mm. The one that ministers doesn't need to work to minister. He ministers yes. because that is the gift that has been given to us. Mm. But the work is the body. 
is coming together. This is us. This is the work. This is the difficult part. This is the work. To be spiritually like-minded. Yeah. All right. But you have not so learned Christ. If so, be that you have heard him and have taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. I need you to start thinking about this and just open up your minds to this. Yes, Jesus is in me. Hallelujah. (laughs) But I am in him. You see, I think that is a big revelation that the church is missing, is that he is in us, but no, we are in him. That's where we are perfect. Him in us, not that perfect. (laughs) We in him, that's perfect. All right, verse 22. So that you put off concerning the former conversation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The old man. Where is the old man? In your conversations. We, we so badly want to bury the old man. But we keep him alive by talking to him every single day. Just look at Jesus in John 17. He talks about himself as a third person. So, for you, how do you get rid of the things that you don't want? Put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Now verse 23. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Pay attention. Your mind. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So how did Jesus leave this earth? He ascended. How did he come back? The day of Pentecost, the Spirit came down. So, who made Jesus what he is? The Spirit. All right. Okay. Nah, the flags are going to go up right now. So, Jesus goes into the desert when the Spirit came upon him, led into the desert, tempted, and then he comes out of the desert full of the Holy Ghost. That's what the Word says. Full of the Holy Ghost. The next thing that happens is those that sat in darkness saw a great light. Boom. Great. Stands up. Blessed are thee. Blessed. Blah, blah, blah. Then he goes on. He starts working miracles, signs, wonders. He starts telling them things about the kingdom. The kingdom is at hand. He starts giving them the Father. He starts giving them the truth. He starts giving them the Word. And then he tells them, I have to die. Because if I don't go, I cannot send you this Spirit that is showing you. (laughs) And then he dies and the Spirit comes down. So, how he ascended, he descended. While the whole... Christian world is still waiting for Jesus to come down in bodily form into Jerusalem and sit on the throne of David and I'm not sure what he's going to do there. While in fact the word, the truth has already come down. It's already here. Why am I saying that? Because in John 17 it says I'm praying for them which will hear the word by you. Not by him. By you. You. (laughs) Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Let the same mind that was in Jesus be in you. So that means the spirit that controlled Jesus' mind is the same spirit that can control your mind. Hallelujah. 
So the mind of Christ is not natural. Jesus didn't do five Bible studies in order to have pure thoughts and not to sin. No. He didn't even try to have the right mind because he was controlled by the Spirit. Uh, and that you put on the new man after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbors. For we are members one of another. Yeah, did I read this? Yeah. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 2. For I determined to know nothing amongst you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Oh, and I was with you in weakness and fear and my trembling, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and power. You can only have demonstrations of the Spirit if your Spirit is renewed. Ah, I hope it's coming together for you. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. Man's wisdom will work until he's dead and he will never complete his work. <sighs> okay. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Howbeit, we speak wisdom amongst them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of the world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they have known it, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. But it is written, The eye has not seen, nor the ear has heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Ah, this is so beautiful. So, Understanding this part is that everything that we will ever need, ever desire, ever want, is already prepared for us. And that gift has been given to us through the death of Jesus Christ because that death enabled us to have the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, with us. That's why he says, if they would have known, they would not have crucified him. <sighs> Because that was the seed that dropped and it sprung up a tree which we are now engrafted in. That's why it's so beautiful. Even after the death of Jesus, God cannot be raised from this world. <laughs> See, the whole world will know God exists because of this word that finds entrance into the heart of man and it can never be erased. So <laughs> the eye has not seen, the ear has not heard. Neither has entered in the heart of man the thing which God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what knows a man, the things of a man, save the Spirit of the man which is in him. Even so, the things of God knows no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of this world. Woo, we are not of this world. Say, I am not of this world. I am not of this world. But the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Oh, Romans 8 where it says, He that spared not his own son, how much more will he not give us all things freely? He's not putting a limit to anything. He says he will give us all things freely. Because if our minds are controlled by the Spirit and not the natural mind, then the things, you will not desire things that is not supposed to be in your life. Okay. Which things we also speak, not in words of man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth. Whew. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet himself is judge of no man. For who has known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? Yes, 
Hallelujah. But we have the mind of Christ. Ah, oh, man, that's beautiful. We have the mind of Christ. So that means he that started the work will complete it. Come on. Uh, the body cannot be the body without the head. And Christ is the head of the body. So, ah, oh, man, let us just renew the spirit of our minds. Mm. Amen. Hallelujah. That's it for tonight.